those people who had their hands up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to start the second session of the Consultative Forum. So this session will focus on two GCM guiding principles, notably the whole of society and child sensitive approaches. If you could settle down, um, we would like to call upon, yes. <laughs> Yes, I would like to call upon um, Philippe Grande again to give an overview, a quick overview of our alignment to the GCM guiding principles. Philippe, please go ahead. Okay, thank, thank you very much. And again, before giving the floor to, and the opportunity to elaborate on two of these guiding principles, the whole of society and the child sensitivity to our distinguished panelists, I'd like to give a short uh, introduction. The grading principles have been at the heart of the work of the fund since its inception, actu and actually even before this, in its design phase. The fund has many objectives. It aims, as we saw in, uh, in the first segment uh, of today's uh, meeting, it aims at fostering international cooperation. It aims at ensuring a true 360 degree approach to the GCM implementation. It aims at strengthening the UN coherence and supporting the UN migration network. These are just to name a few of the main objectives of the fund. But amongst these objectives, the fund also has a strong ambition. It's the ambition of showcasing how the GCM guiding principles can and must be mainstreamed throughout the GCM implementation. All programs supported by the fund should be models to be replicated, good practices to get inspiration from. Our rules, procedures, templates, assessment grids, everything has been designed with the guiding principles in mind. And very importantly, the fund result framework specif specifically measures with indicators and targets, the alignment of the fund with the principles. Some are easier to track. For instance, national ownership can be ensured through the involvement of national governments in the submission process and their participation in project management mechanisms, for instance, a chairing or co-chairing uh, joint program steering committees at national level. The UN also now has a very long experience in using gender markers, but others are more difficult to measure. It is for the purpose of tracking performance that, for instance, uh, an innovative human rights marker, which to our knowledge is the first such indicator, indicator was developed with the support of OHCHR. The two guiding principles uh, that we have selected for discussion today are not more important than others. Neither are they the ones for which the fund uh, is necessarily performing the best. We've picked them because at its last meeting, the steering committee has identified that additional efforts were required to further strengthen their integration. And we thought it would be interesting for all partners to hear about the work in progress and have the opportunity to express their views. On that note, back to you, Rachel. Thank you, Philippe. Now I would like to introduce our first panelist, uh, Ms. Carolina Gotardo. She is the executive director of the International Detention Coalition and also a steering committee member representing a stakeholder constituency. Over to you, Carolina. Thanks, thanks, Reiko, and hello, everyone. Um, good morning to everyone, and also good afternoon to those who are um, accompanying us online today. And it is a pleasure to be here today at this third annual consultative forum of the MPTF. So, um, like Ray and Philippe were saying before, since 2021, IDC, uh, which we are a global coalition of over 400 members, civil society and migrant-led organizations and academia and other experts working on ending immigration detention. And we have been honored to take to be one of the stakeholder representatives uh, at the MPTF. Uh, and this is a responsibility that we take very seriously. So um, the, the MPTF has a very important role to play because it's, a, it's, it's actually a mechanism that can enable the realization of the GCM objectives and the guiding principles on the ground. And this is considering different local and national realities. So if it's well-targeted, it also has the potential to make a difference in migrant lives. 
Um, and it's crucial to remember that this point of making a difference in migrant lives, is, it should be our main purpose of every single project at, at the MPTF and really of GCM implementation efforts as a whole. Um, I am particularly pleased that this specific session, like, like it was expla explained before of the consultative forum, is dedicated to the guiding principles of the GCM because those are essential for that effective implementation and that impact that we're talking about that needs to be people-centered, gender-responsive, rights-based, child-sensitive, etc. So the MPTF, um, uh, like Philip was saying before, has, has already developed the human rights marker and the gender-responsive marker. And it means that every single project needs to explain how, how they are uh, upholding these this sort of principles in terms of the development and the implementation. And th right now, th there is the prioritization of the other um, guiding principles. So Verena will be talking later about the development of the, of the child, resp uh, of, of the child uh, responsive marker. And um, we are also we are also uh, develop we are also developing and the process of development the guidance for the civil society participation as part of the of the of making alive that whole of society approach in everything that the fund that the MPTF does. And we see this whole of society approach as particularly essential to the implementation of the GCM, and also to guide the work of the MPTF. Because to achieve change on the ground at a national and local level, which is where change happens, there is a need for multiple actors that, and they need to be engaged at an equal basis in terms of bringing expertise and knowledge and access to the table. And is this is, is and this is the impact and the actual change on the lives of migrant women and men and children that actually matter. If there is no positive impact on these lives. Quite frankly, I think we're wasting our time. This is what we should be focusing on, on that, on that impact of, of um, changing, having that positive effect on the lives of, of migrants. So the MPTF um, already has, as part of its working, the composition includes the participation of civil society and other stakeholders um, from the beginning as part of the governance. And this is a very positive ele element and it's essential in, in terms of, of um, talking about this uh, the, the implementation of the whole of society approach. Um, stakeholders have equal voting rights with other MPTF um, steering committee members. And this, as I say, this is important, but it's not enough. And the participation of the stakeholders and civil society, including all the, uh, including all the aspects of the fund, need, need to be across all, all its specific working. So for instance, by ensuring meaningful participation and engaging in all the projects that the, that the fund is funding. So at IDC as a representatives of stakeholders in the steering committee, we see our role targeted towards advocating for this full participation of civil society, including migrant led organizations and women organizations in all the projects and initiatives. And this is also relating to ensuring that the MPTF projects include meaningful participation, not only in theory, but in practice. So migrant-led organizations and civil society, these are, these are often the actors that are doing the work on the ground, and these are the, the actors that are closest to migrants. So it's important that participation is not a tick-the-box exercise, but that includes the co-creation of projects with migrants and with civil society, and including these actors from the planning stage up to the evaluation step, uh, stage, so across all the kind of different life of the, of the project cycle. And it also implies that, that projects involving civil society in a meaningful way, including local civil society and migrant communities, that this is done not only on a consultative basis, but also as project partners with equal funding allocated for their contributions um, and a meaningful, role, a, a meaningful role as part of the project. So in other words, we're talking about meaningful participation and this is in contrast with tokenistic participation. And this is very important. Uh, participation also should take into account a gender responsive and an intersectional approach, um, taking into account the diversity with civil society and communities, including gender, race, age, and other diversity criteria. 
Um, and as Philip and Raiko were explaining before, we're pleased that recently the steering committee has been having these conversations about enhancing civil society involvement in the implementation of the fund and really thinking and looking at the best ways to ensure that this whole of society approach is meaningful implement, meaningfully implementing, implemented in the running of the fund. So as a result, the steering committee is working on the guidance, this guidance for civil society participation under a whole of society approach. And this is definitely a positive step. We are very happy to be part of this initiative. Um, it is important that the guidance translates in practice in ensuring, in ensuring that all these different projects involve the meaningful participation of civil society from the beginning. For instance, in, in terms of thinking how this works practically, so for instance, thinking about that the assessment criteria for the projects takes into account this point, that um, the reporting also reflects this, and that also that this is all reflected in additional resources for local civil society and for migrant leaders that are involved in the development and the implementation of the projects. So different modalities have been identified. There are ongoing conversations, um, but there is also that decision to go ahead, ahead with the uh, production of the guidance, which is, which is good. So the next, the next challenge for us is going to be to translate this guidance into action. We will have the guidance um, and we will need to ensure that, th that there is that action in every single project of the fund and that this is then, and then once, uh, once we're thinking about the action, we need to go back the way I started and it's about the impact from the action. We need to think about the impact um, and how this works in terms of, of uh, how it's impacting migrant lives um, and, and the lives of, of people who are on the ground. And this is a challenge, but it's a challenge that we need to step, in, step into. So in conclusion, prioritizing this whole of society approach and centering the efforts of the migration MPTF in ensuring that all the projects are truly and meaningfully, including migrant communities and civil society actors, will enhance, enhance the potential of the GCM in its guiding principles in creating ch change on the ground and positively impacting migrant lives. A civil society coalition, and as one of the stakeholders representative of the MPTF steering committee, we find these efforts very important. And we're looking forward to the process of developing this guidance that we're talking about for civil society participation under the whole of society approach. And to also continue engaging in exploring modalities for civil society and migrant led organizations to have access um, to the fund in meaningful ways and to push for um, actual impacts but to the lives of people on the ground. So thank you very much uh, for, for your attention and we look forward to continuing with these discussions. Thank you very much, Carolina. Um, I would like to now introduce Ms. Verena Klaus. Uh, she's the global lead for migration and displacement with UNICEF. Over to you, thank you. Thank you so much and uh, good morning, everyone. Good evening. I hope you're comfortable on your sofas, on your desks and here in the room, everyone who is here with us today. Um, it, it's a real pleasure to be here because in many ways, it's, it's, it's a testament of the guiding principle of child sensitivity, not just being um, a principle on paper, but being life and kicking. So I'm, I'm very honored to have an opportunity to reflect on really three three aspects of it. I would like to very briefly um, sort of put on the table a, a very brief glimpse on the state of the world on the move as it, as it looks for children. Secondly, I would like to very briefly reflect on the secret power of the GCM and by extension the MPTF in, in making this world a better world for children on the move. And then thirdly, um, share what is the current thinking specifically on how to do child sensitivity in the context of the MPTF and leveraging the opportunity of the MPTF as a key as a key instrument. So first, um, the state of the world as it looks and as it is experienced by children um, who are on the move. I mean, first of all, as we heard already yesterday, one in three international migrants is under 30. Um, around 36 million children are considered international migrants, if we trust the statistics we have. And this is, of course, no surprise. Um, in situations of crisis migration, we have large shares of children 
moving with family or caregivers. But also we know that migration intent, um, the decision to move um, peaks, especially at the ages 17 to 21. And this is when people you know, want to start their life, move and take decisions, and in some cases have to take high risks. We also know, on the other hand, that one in three identified victims of trafficking are children under 18. So there are acute and urgent protection needs that are specific to children. We also know that still today, unfortunately, more than 100 children, 100 countries in the world continue to detain children in the context of migration, and very often simply and only because of their migration status or of having entered a country. And we know in the OECD country context that actually 40% of migration is driven by, by family migration, people moving and then bringing their families or family following. So families as a nucleus and as a key component of migration management and how that affects children or how children figure in this is, is core and central to managing migration in OECD country contexts, but also in the world. We also know that migration patterns are highly gendered. Um, and it does make a difference if the person moving is male, female, old, young. Um, this has impacts on remittances, for example, where we know that female labor migrants who remit, their remittances are predominantly used to pay for health education expenditures of the children. And there are differences in, in gendered remittances. We also know that there are some real imbalances that we can't ignore. Um, the fact that nine out of 10 unaccompanied and separated children who arrive in the European Union are boys is food for thought. You know, what is going on? What is wrong here? So this is just sort of what we see today, but we also need to look into the future. And I think I was very, very happy to hear earlier from our United States representative about the US coming in and specifically wanting to have more attention being paid to the linkages of climate and migration and mobility. Already today, we know that 820 million children are exposed to the impacts of heat waves, making certain regions of the world uninhabitable for children. We know that 400 million children are at high risk of cyclones. We only need to think Pakistan to have an image in our mind of what that means, or Cuba, because 320 million children are exposed to the risks of flooding. Um, so that is a roughly a billion children who are directly exposed and already experiencing climate stresses and climate shocks. So where does that leave us? It leaves us really with a state of the world today where child sensitivity isn't just a nice thing to have. It is central and core to managing migration in a productive, efficient, humane and human rights based way. Because children are moving. Children are even disproportionately moving, young people, families are moving, labor migrants have families, labor migrants have children, um, and the climate impacts and the future that is already happening in front of our eyes is particularly putting children at risk. So where is then the GCM coming in and by extension the MPTF? Well, I, I still believe and we believe as UNICEF that the secret power of the GCM has been to pretty much for the first time recognized that centrality of children for migration management. Over 60 commitments and references in the GCM speak and refer to children. And it isn't just in the sort of small often box of vulnerability or the unaccompanied children. It is across all the objectives from labor migration to crisis migration to climate mobility to aspects related to integration and hardcore difficult migration management enforcement issues like returns, detention. And this is also why the specific guiding principle of child sensitivity is such a game changer. And the GCM in many ways sets a precedent that I think we, we would like to see going forward that effectively no migration practice policy um, will be successful if it isn't child sensitive. Now, we have seen that same spirit continue to live on in the IMRF progress declaration, um, where again, we have specifically um, been very, very pleased to see very clear language on the need for gender responsive and child sensitive migration policies um, and the importance of upholding the best interests of children really across the spectrum of migration 
um, for management to screening to returns entire spectrum we have been you know very very reassured by pledges from nigeria from thailand colombia germany mexico korea cambodia that all speak to specific objectives that relate to children from birth registration to better migration management focus on children's needs to specific commitments to end child immigration detention so child sensitivity as a guiding principle in the gcm lives and it is happening Member states are already taking concrete steps and making concrete investments to deliver on those commitments. And in that sense, it is only natural that the MPTF would in a way follow suit. And it's very, very promising and encouraging that the MPDF steering committee has specifically asked UNICEF to help put forward a proposal for a child sensitivity marker that it can then review and assess and, and hopefully adopt that would in a way follow the logic of the GCM that recognize the centrality of children for migration management and that 360 whole of society, whole of government approach, um, but also extend this to follow the logic that you always need to follow the money if you want to know what's going on. Now, what is a child sensitivity marker and what is it not? As much as I or UNICEF would like, it's not about unicifying the world, right? It is not about, in a way, expecting that any future MPDF program needs to automatically focus on children. No, that's not what it is. It is very, very much about making sure that any program and MPDF proposal, whether it focuses on climate, on health, on labor migration, or cross-regional cooperation, is sensitive to the specific needs and rights of children. Not because only it is the right thing to do, but because also that ensures that it's a good program and a good investment. So the child sensitivity marker has looked at good models out there, including the human rights marker and the experience of the gender marker to try to really you know, help provide very clear and easy to use guidance that helps anyone developing a program to make sure that we can very early assess in the design stage whether a program may do harm to children by doing a minimalist but important child rights impact assessment, whether and how it could posi positively maximize positive impact on children, but also how by being child sensitive and being considerate, it can improve um, results overall and hereby support GCM implementation. So this also means that you know, it in the future, by using and rolling out the child sensitivity marker, um, it does not mean that projects that don't focus on children will no longer be considered, but that any program going forward will have been assessed and reviewed on the basis of its merit also of making sure we do no harm to children and we maximize the intentional or the unintentional benefits for children. So a program that may not have the word child in its text, that may focus on adult labor migrants, will still have considered the child rights impact. It may have intentional, unintentional, building basic safeguards for child protection and child safeguarding. And where there are specific components that relate to children or focus on children, or where program or personnel will come into direct contact with children, that adequate training of those personnel is provided to keep children safe, that there is meaningful participation of children in the design or implementation or evaluation of the program, but also that there is, and that is where the, the scoring gets higher and higher, there's disaggregation of data, specifically also by age, and where appropriate and where it makes sense, specific results for children. This MPDF child sensitivity marker will be presented and discussed by the MPDF steering committee. And we obviously hope and look forward to a fruitful and, and constructive and, and sort of honest discussion on how we can get that balance right of being ambitious and practical at the same time. And as UNICEF, we do hope that in this particular instance, the MPDF steering committee and the MPDF fund as such is breaking through one more glass wall by making a child sensitivity marker a first in the UN trust fund ecosystem, but hopefully not the last, because if it works, if we can prove that it can work, hopefully this would be a model going forward for any joint programming where UN agencies and member states here are involved. Thank you.
Thank you to both our panelists for introducing the guidance note and the child sensitivity marker initiative and it's exciting times at the fund and very much look forward to implementing these guidance and markers. Now, um, I would like to open the floor again and again, apologies for not being able to come to everybody. I recall that there was a very long standing nameplate up um, from WHO. So I would like to call upon our partner WHO um, to take the floor. Thank you. For giving me the floor. WHO would like to commend the work of the Multipartner Trust Fund of the UN Network. Five months ago at the International Migration and Review Forum, strong reference was made to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on migrants' well-being, hampering the advancement of the GCM. Global cooperation and external solidarity would pinpoint as fundamental pathways necessary to ensure that all people in every country, including migrants, have access to essential health services as prescribed by the Objective 15 and access to the necessary tools as vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics, and is promising to see the numerous reference to health that are appearing throughout the Progress Declaration. Last June, WHO stepped down from the steering committee of the MPTF, but our work is not over and we are reaffirming the WHO commitment to continue to support the MPTF also externally from the steering uh, as a member of the executive committee of the UN network. We are very pleased to see health as an emerging need and concern for action in the strategic direction of the fund. We are also fully supporting the priority of climate change because uh, this is also uh, cross the lines and boundaries with health. Warmer and wetter conditions make it easier to transmit infections through water and food by mosquitoes, other vectors, increasing the risk of malaria, dengue, and I could go on and on with the risks that influence our health. The disruptive effects of climate change have forced also islands to migrate, and this exacerbates pre-existing health inequalities. Thus, we are looking forward to seeing the MPTF promoting projects with an inclusive approach to health an approach that has been critical at the time of the COVID-19 pandemic response and forwards. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, colleague from ILO, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, ILO is, has been honoured to serve as a member of the inaugural steering committee of the fund, representing the executive committee, and has been a key partner in implementing a number of programmes around the world. The ILO sees the MPTF as a means to develop innovative new approaches to key issues in GCM implementation. The fund has supported vital work related to climate change in East Africa with the IGADs in the IGAD region and in the Pacific most recently, as well as helping develop an innovative approaches to supporting local communities with regards to migration and the Mexico-Chile project, as well as holistic approaches to labor migration in the bridge program in the Philippines, amongst many others, and many more interesting projects in the pipeline. The network, co -stream, uh, network work stream on climate change, GCM and the Paris Agreement, co-led by ILO, IOM and UNFCCC with a number of other partners, will be showcasing the important work of the fund on climate change at the forthcoming COP to demonstrate the effectiveness of this support. We are further seeking other partnerships to extend and continue the good work on climate change, migration and resilience in other regions and uh, in other with other approaches around the world. We would agree that the targeted nature of the fund is essential to providing to support uh, high impact uh, partnerships and programs and which can sow, sow the seeds for important future partnerships and uh, and scaled up approaches on migration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I recognize there's been a hand up at the very back. Um, I believe it is Okup. So please, sir, you have the floor. Yes, uh, Madam uh, Moderator, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, my name is Shakirul Islam, and I'm representing a grassroots migrant organization, uh, which is called OCUP. OKUP means Migrant Workers Development Program, and we're based in uh, Bangladesh. And uh, uh, 
you know, OCAP is a, a platform of migrants uh, formed and run by the returning migrant workers. And our mission is to bring the uh, voices and perspectives of the migrant workers in the whole uh, discourse, migration discourse, and also in the discourse of climate change and migration. I thanks to the speakers, uh, panelists, and stakeholders for your important inf interventions. But I must thank uh, to Ms. Carolina uh, from, from International Detention uh, Coalition uh, for her remarks um, on the meaning meaningful participation of CSOs uh, in, the, in accessing to the uh, uh, multi-trust um, uh, fund. Uh, this is because I want to reinforce the same, you know, being a representative of the migrant organization or grassroots organization, we strongly feel that the participation of the migrants organizations or the local organizations is really important uh, in the whole process of concept development to uh, proposal development and design, because we believe that the bottom-up approach is really important to bring the migrants need in the forefront so that we can have better design of the interventions that really make sense uh, to the uh, uh, make sense um, in the life of the migrant workers or their communities uh, to bring a sustainable change. So, so that's uh, that's why uh, um, uh, because you know uh, very often actually we see that the uh, that the projects that come from top down approach have really no meaningful participation of the migrants and their communities is just like an implementation of activities and after the implementation of the project there is no sustainability of such a process so my uh, strong recommendation to you will be uh, to make sure that the participation of the uh, grassroots organizations migrant organizations local organizations are there in a meaningful way so that uh, 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 you know we can contribute to bring the uh, needs of the migrant workers and their communities in project design in concept design and then implement by engaging the migrant workers and the communities so that they can actually uh, the part of the implementation of this project and uh, it make uh, a positive change in their lives and uh, it ensures the sustainability of the projects even after the project is phased out so thank you very much for giving me the floor Thank you very much for your input. Um, next, I would like to call for the representative from Denmark, please. Please go ahead. Thank you uh, very much, and thank you for the in, uh, inspiring uh, remarks from uh, from the panelists and uh, and from the floor. Uh, I'll start by saying that Denmark is currently in election mode, and we're hence awaiting policy guidance from uh, from new government. So I'll be uh, be quite brief, but just wanted to uh, to state here that uh, Denmark is pleased to have entered the steering committee of the of the fund as of uh, as of this uh, summer, and that we look very much forward to contribute to the implementation of the many good programs under the fund and to support the development of and also mobilization around the fund in the uh, in the years to come from a danish perspective we see the fund as a very valuable tool in terms of promoting and delivering on strengthened international cooperation as well as the whole of un and whole of society approach towards addressing migration uh, challenges as has also been stated by uh, several uh, others in the room today thank you Thank you very much. Um, next, UNHCR, please. Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, we would like to echo actually the comments already uh, made by a number of, uh, of uh, interveners regarding the value of, uh, of the fund for UNHCR too is a participating agency in, in a number of programs uh, already funded or in the, in the pipeline. Uh, Maybe to clarify why actually UNHCR is a participating uh, uh, agency, because uh, of course this is a fund uh, dedicated to support the implementation of the GCM, but quite obviously protecting migrants' rights actually uh, alleviate the pressure on the asylum system, uh, and also because uh, these uh, progress in migrants' rights actually in many respects and topics where the status is irrelevant are also benefiting uh, refugees. So we are actually very appreciative of, uh, of the fund. 
uh, a number of, uh, of its values have been highlighted. We would also like to recall that it's actually a great uh, operational uh, way to strengthen not only cooperation with, uh, with the states, but also uh, within uh, UN agencies and uh, the civil uh, societies. So that's actually a very important aspect of the uh, of a fund too. We are also welcoming uh, the emphasis on the regional uh, or, or multi-country uh, approach. Uh, I have in particular the, the program in the IGAD region in, in mind where actually this multi-country approach on a topic such as climate change and mobility is, uh, is of paramount uh, uh, importance. Uh, so this is uh, uh, also quite uh, uh, quite a welcome uh, development. We will uh, be continuing actually uh, to cooperate with uh, other uh, partners at all levels to uh, to submit uh, uh, further proposals, also taking into account uh, the, uh, the priority on, on climate change mobility, which has been highlighted on several occasions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next, a thought, please. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, Stella Okboko, so Afford. Um, Afford is a diaspora and development organization with a mission to uh, enhance and expand the contributions of the diaspora to um, development. It's also a member of global um, of the Global Civil Society Action Committee, of which there are a number of members in the room online as well. Um, and also now a new steering committee a member of the uh, MPTF as well. Um, it's very um, positive to hear the inclusion of civil society participation in the fund and the development of guidelines um, on this. The implementation of the GCM is all about having the resources to do this, and the MPTF is a, pos is a positive response to this. I also wanted to note in particular the challenge and the gap between what has been pledged and what the target is. Um, and migrants are, of course, the focus of the GCM as recipients, but uh, it, it also has to be noted that migrants and diaspora are also stakeholders and actors in development who make very significant contributions as well to, um, um, to um, development. Globally, approximately 600 billion US dollars were sent in remittances by migrants and diaspora to low and middle and to low and middle income countries in 2021. And the GCM objectives 19 and 20 are very clear on this, not just on the need to leverage migrants and diaspora resources, including um, finance investment for sustainable development, but also very clear on some of the practical approaches to this such as the development of diaspora development funds and financial products that facilitate um, migrants and diaspora investments. Um, so on this, just three questions perhaps to reflect on or um, um, if it's, um, if, uh, it's possible to, to provide any, any responses to these. Uh, but the questions are around how can this be addressed by the fund as a way to A, to raise additional resources for implementation of activities at country and level, uh, B, to ensure that the limited resources of the MPTF uh, is able to go even further, and C, on a country level, how is this being factored into the implementation of the GCM? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and lastly, I would like to call on OCDIH. Thank you for your patience, sir. You have the floor. Muchas gracias. Buen día. Eh, buenas tardes y buenas noches a quienes están conectados y conectadas. Eh, comparto totalmente la apreciación de los anteriores colegas de sociedad civil. Y en esta mañana vengo en, en como uno de los representantes del bloque latinoamericano y quiero agradecer públicamente también a una cooperación solidaria como es AWI Internacional que ha facilitado nuestra presencia aquí en este foro. Muchas gracias, señora moderadora. Eh, sin duda alguna, han habido, como ustedes lo han mencionado, muy buenas experiencias de financiamiento a nivel de gobiernos, pero también hay brechas en las cuales tiene que mejorarse. Y creo que es importante sacar esas experiencias interesantes Y eh, me alegra porque han expresado de que este financiamiento estará alineado a indicadores, a los principios rectores, pero también a un proceso de planificación participativa. 
Porque recuerden que en el contexto centroamericano, la migración es básicamente un proceso de desplazamiento forzado que se ha generado por las brechas históricas eh, de sociales que tienen que ver con oportunidades de educación, de salud, de trabajo, pero también por los impactos del cambio climático. Pero no hemos hablado, creo que dos o tres aspectos de, este, de, esta, de esta determinante, que tiene que ver con eh, las industrias extractivas, el impacto que la industria extractiva está haciendo en nuestros países. Tiene que ver con el tema de monocultivos, tiene que ver con eh, las concesiones que se hacen. Y esto está generando también desplazamientos porque territorios como lo de los pueblos originarios está siendo prácticamente otorgado a grandes empresas. Y ahí regreso un poco y me alegra sustancialmente lo que Carolina manifestó, que el propósito del pacto y de este fondo es mejorar la vida de los migrantes y de las migrantes. Y en condiciones como nuestro país, yo vengo de Honduras, en donde sin duda alguna la movilización de recursos domésticos está en mengua. Tenemos una crisis muy fuerte, golpeados actualmente por eh, fenómenos climáticos que han puesto casi de rodillas a nuestro país. Es necesario entonces generar políticas públicas que prioricen justamente a esta población vulnerable. Y priorización de políticas públicas implica también la oportunidad de parar estas, estos modelos de desarrollo que son fallidos. Me alegra sustancialmente también escucharle, Carolina, la participación de la sociedad civil en todo este proceso. En la anterior sesión estuvo ausente prácticamente de muchos de quienes tomaron participación por parte de los gobiernos la inclusión de la sociedad civil. Y creo que es importante porque hemos hecho un papel bastante determinante en términos de auditoría social. Hemos sido los veedores en cada uno de los países para el uso eficiente, transparente de los recursos. Y queremos también asumir esa, ese, ese reto. Muchas gracias por esta oportunidad y feliz tarde. Thank you, sir. With this, I'd like to close the Q&A session. We apologize, um, but we run out of time. Please use the QR code for the survey if you'd like to input more. And also for those who are online, you can use the chat function and we will make sure to relay this information, comments, inputs, and take this into um, our future uh, funding uh interventions etc now i would like to continue to the closing session and would like to ask um his excellency ambassador dr hans peter hugel to take the floor thank you Very good. Thank you. Dear Excellences, uh, distinguished delegates, uh, colleagues, it's an honor and privilege to convey some concluding remarks at the end of today's very informative and important meeting of the Consultative Forum. Today, four years after the adoption of the Global Compact on Migration in Marrakesh and three years after the launch of the Migration Multipartner Trust Fund, we had another opportunity to access the impact of the fund and its first results as part of the GCM capacity building mechanism. Looking at the uh, ongoing projects, I'm glad to confirm that the Trust Fund has already proven to be a success story. In the spirit of a common effort and the reform of the United Nations development system, all projects are implemented jointly by more than one agency. This is leading to stronger results and is reflecting the multidimensional character of GCM implementation. The Director General has highlighted some impressive examples of these achievements in his opening statement. The fund 
is a strong and indeed indispensable pillar that strengthens the resilience of migrants and communities in order to protect and improve migration governance, prosperity, and social cohesion. The fund, um, let's put it that way, in it, the fund perfectly reflects the 360 degree approach of the GCM with projects ranging from migration governance, legal migration, climate induced migration to the fight against trafficking and thereby covering a broad range of GCM objective. Let me sum up where Germany sees the strengths and values of the MMPTF. It puts ownership of partner governments at the center. It has a multi-stakeholder character reflecting the whole of society approach of the GCM. Its nexus approach is bringing humanitarian, peace and development agencies together. It is an important laboratory and catalyst to develop and pilot innovative approaches, and it is strengthening a multilateral response to migration and enhances the crucial role of the UN network on migration. The fund offers a unique incentive for bilateral and multilateral cooperation in the field of migration. The fact that 119 concept notes for funding projects were received from more than 80 countries as highlighted by the chair in his opening statement, does not only reflect the fact that the demand for member states to support GCM implementation is high. It also means that in over 80 countries and regions, multiple UN entities and their partners have joined forces to implement migration projects. The fund has undoubtedly contributed to greater coherence in the UN work around migration and helped make the network a reality and stronghold of multilateral migration and development cooperation. It also provides an indispensable instrument to promote unity of purpose within the UN system. It has proven to be a critical component in the developing momentum between UN country teams and host countries in the field of migration. Regarding the future strategic and operative development of the fund, we see the need to link it even closer to the global challenges which adversely affect the situation of migrants. We therefore welcome that in its recent decisions, the MMPTF steering committee has identified global health and climate change as priorities for future action. The ambassador from Fiji, Mr. Luke Donvalu, made it clear again to all of us describing the consequences of climate change for Fiji. Voluntary and forced migration, also internal. And he, you added, here the fund comes in. Thus, it is important to address the effects of climate change and the access of migrants to essential healthcare services as areas which will deserve specific attention and strengthening. And I might add that we also need to have all vulnerable groups uh, in mind when we speak of migrants like children, what we heard before. And I might add also the meaningful participation of migrants um, is very important for sustainability. Germany was an early supporter um, of, on, of the fund. It has been the largest donor to the MMPTF so far, and it will continue contributing to its financial stability. However, the fund can better fulfill its potential only if it succeed in broadening its donor base and bringing also non-traditional contributors on board. This is a crucial contribution to strengthening mutual trust, solidarity, and ownership. In a, order to achieve this, we believe that next to traditional donor acquisition and telling the su success stories of the fund, we have to take every approach as possible. One new instrument could be a matching pledge scheme, which Germany would be delighted to pilot. 
by partnering with a new donor, existing donors could increase visibility and ownership for the fund in the spirit of partnership and for mutual benefit. It's about financial contribution, but also about political support for multilateral effort, even symbolic support, as the ambassador from Mexico put it, in order to broaden the donor base. We are looking forward to discussing the details of a matching pledge scheme in the near future, invite member states who have not yet contributed to the fund and in a position to do so, to express their interest and count on the fund management units, convening power and resilience and facilitation role in that regard. Finally, I would like to use the opportunity to thank DG Vitorino for his strong leadership as chair of the MMPTF steering committee and the UN Migration Network. You have placed them at the center of global migration cooperation. My thanks go also to the fund management unit. You have moved the fund successfully from theory to practice. We see the, that the MMPTF is not only conceptually strong, but also very well managed and positioned to continue its success story as the UN's fund for migration. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Ambassador. And with this, we would like to close this session. Thank you all for your participation. And again, um, we urge you to use the the survey with the QR code and also chat function online. Please stay put because we are now going into our next, um, next session, which is on the fourth session on knowledge management and strategic communications. It will begin very shortly as soon as we change the people and it will be for just one hour before lunch. So please do remain seated for this next session. Thank you so much.